Hey guys, how you doing? My name is Tis and welcome to my channel. You know, I was thinking it's a bit strange. I've been already at my parents' place for more than a month because the corona situation is taking much longer than we at first um, expected. But yeah, I was thinking that I was quite lucky that my family is quite understanding of me doing this, doing all these reactions, fangirling over hot anime characters, crying over sad anime deaths. It's all happening in this room and I'm lucky that my family is understanding. They just let me be and do my thing. And I really appreciate it. But today we'll be watching episode 6 of Beastars. I am actually really excited. In the previous episode we finally had some improvement in the relationship between Legoshi and Haru. Before that it was just really awkward and they didn't really have a proper conversation. And in, in the previous episode I feel like it went, it was a bit better. It was still super awkward um, but at I, but I feel like they still made a bit of a progress, they made like the first steps, now at least they know each other's names. So yeah, I'm just really excited, I want to see how that develops further. We also discovered that Louis is also somehow involved with Haru, we don't really know what kind of relationship they have. It could be purely physical or there's also a bit of a romance involved, we're not sure about that yet. But nonetheless, I'm super excited to watch this episode, so without further ado, let's jump right into it. So, let's go! Alright, I'm ready, so I'm gonna start the episode in 3, 2, 1, go! I like it how they just open it with the opening. <laughs> It's just a great way to start it. Buffalo style. I never get tired of this song, it's so good! Isn't it wonderful my life? And the music's over! <laughs> I'm still afraid for this final scene though. I, I wonder if it's gonna be related to the story at some point. Uh, my vision blurs is the dream or reality? Oh my gosh, okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah, those things happened. Mm. Yeah, it's probably just something that happens often. <laughs> Don't think too hard about it. <laughs> so that's the approach you're taking? I 
Okay, it's good that she's playing along. <laughs> what was that? Good job, good job, Legoshi. Yeah. I like this division, how they split up the screen. It's kind of like showing how um, people deal with bullying or that kind of treatment differently. <laughs> oh, he's getting embarrassed. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Cold out again. The dark market. I wonder what kind of things they sell at that dark market. Probably just real meat and that kind of stuff. Exactly, isn't it also our first time that we really get to see like the city... Yeah, the city side. So far, we've only seen like the campus. <laughs> so cute. Busted. No, it's fine. Oh, they're going straight for the sex talk. <laughs> Exposed. <laughs> this is real hot high school boys talk. I love it. 
this is how it really is. Also in like real life, guys talk about this stuff. I think. I mean, girls talk about this stuff as well. It's not like we're that much different. So yeah, I really understand this and yeah, that's why I like it. Zuzel maps. <laughs> nice. I also like to see them in casual clothes. I didn't mention it, but yeah. I feel like this is the first time we see them in casual clothes as well. Uh oh. <gasps> oh! Oh, he's just... Oh, that's really weird. He's just offering his own fingers. Uh-oh. Get away from there. Get away from there. You're not gonna pay for a finger. <gasps> that's the dark market. Oh, no, don't do it. Don't do it. Oh, okay, so that's what the dark market is like. It's really preying on those carnivores. Oh, we get a slight flashback. Oh no, Bill's really going for it. Oh no! Because of the dark market. Yeah, good. Oh, so much temptation. What did he answer? Oh, oh, yeah, it just. No. He's still feeling guilty about it. What? Um, 
um, yeah. Why is he so calm about it? He's like, yeah, something's wrong here. Oh, dear. Yeah, he's really calm, surprisingly. <laughs> oh shit. Okay, so he's the white man. So he's not a shady guy. He's speaking the truth, though he hasn't. Yeah, he's in love! Oh shit, he's pointing out like the psychological effects. Psychotherapists, oh. Yeah, interesting. So he might be someone that Legoshi needs because he's really struggling with everything uh, in his mind, especially. <laughs> Still that punch. Mm <laughs> See those muscles. <laughs> A kind of strong doctor. <laughs> oh, I like this panda. I like his room as well. It even has bamboo inside. There's a nice atmosphere. <laughs> like a chihuahua. <laughs>
<laughs> kind of true, but... <laughs> no, no. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, he's now being confronted in all kinds of ways. Oh, he was waiting for him. But I suppose Bill and the other guy did it. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Oh. I love this episode. This episode really touched upon what it means to be a carnivore and how much of it is actually like in your genes, like what's in your nature and they touch upon like different kind of ways to deal with it. So that's why you have even within carnivores, which are often put in one category like in the news by like out like other people even within the the category of carnivores you have all these differences between how people deal with their like natural mm, how you call it natural traits Or with their instincts, maybe? So yeah, this episode was really legacy focused. He was being confronted by the panda psychiatrist. Yeah, he got confronted in all kinds of ways. Also, when he approached that, mm, that guy who was selling off his own fingers. Also, when he was talking to Bill and later when he was talking to the panda, he was confronted in all kinds of ways about his, like, him being a carnivore and what it actually does to him mentally and how to deal with it. And it, it's, it's really complicated. I understand where Legacy is coming from. He has always led that upright life. But now that he's growing up, also his, like, desires are growing you know it's also when you grow up as a human you have these like eventually you'll get like these new kinds of desires and even for a human that's already like really complicated but when you look at how animals deal with it it's always the question like is it my like consciousness that is telling me that i feel this way or i have this desire 
is it you know my is it my personal feelings or is it my instinct that is telling me this so it's really complicated and as the panda called it it was more like legoshi's inner desire to devour uh, haru which is kind of warped and changed in nature and which he interprets now as love and that may be true but we want to believe that it is actually love right but Till how is he gonna deal with it? Is he will he be able to hold back his inner desire for the rest of his life, or will he eventually attack her at some point as well? You never know, and it may hurt himself psychologically as well. You know how the panda showed him all these pictures of like past patients who have hurt themselves really badly because they couldn't deal with it mentally and Legoshi might be lucky still because he hasn't had the taste of a real her before yet and I feel like the most of the other patients the panda mentioned have had a taste of a her before once and after that they couldn't like um, hold back anymore because they've had that taste it's kind of like um, mm, it's kind of like an addiction right you don't you cannot get addicted to something without ever trying it it's when you get the first taste or when you consume it more often that you really start to get addicted to it and then it's really hard to quit. It's also with smoking, with using drugs and in this case it's eating meat. So yeah, we touched upon that dark market, how that is actually necessary in order to keep the society calm and all the carnivores calm. And Bill mentioned like, yeah, see all these grown-ups, they're all calm and that's because this dark market exists. And Legoshi didn't agree, you know, like, if, yeah, is that what it means to be a grown-up? And I understand where Legacy is coming from. So we have these different views on on uh, meat consumption, basically. And Bill is like the type of character who is really just doing what his instincts are telling him. And he also said that like, he re fully embraced himself being a carnivore. So that's why he's not holding back on eating meat, using rabbit blood. like um, So... You know, so he was also really excited about eating those fingers. Ugh. But then you have these type of characters like Legoshi and also Alba who just don't want to do uh, what their instincts are telling them. They still have the beliefs and the will to defy them. And I thought it was nice that Legoshi said in the end, like, we just want to stand tall in this society. And I thought those were really good words and it describes perfectly what Legoshi... Um, is aiming for and why he behaves the way he does um, because he has that willpower to stand tall like he said so I thought that was really beautiful and I don't know this show is just so much deeper like you initially would think um, you can also relate it to the real world in a lot of different ways like I said the way also like also the way these um, these guys talk to each other in like in their private lives outside of school it's so much like normal high schoolers so this show is so relatable even though every character in this show is an animal but still there's so many things that you can relate to the real life which makes the show so interesting and it has so many different layers there's so many different ways you can interpret certain situations so i'm just telling in my comments how i interpret certain situations and how i think of it i think there are a lot of other ways in which you can look at this show and that's what makes the show interesting so yeah legoshi has kind of had his first therapy with the panda i wonder if he'll continue doing that but for but for now this panda seems like a cool guy i'm really so skeptical though about like bear types because of the first episode we know we've seen silhouette of the guy who attacked um tem was his name right the the sheep i think and we've only saw the silhouette it could be like tiger i'm still suspecting bill but it could also be possibly a panda so we don't know yet i, I i'm just i just suspect every animal with that kind of silhouette but yeah i thought this episode was really interesting this episode touched upon a lot of interesting topics so overall i thought it was a really nice and cool episode and i really cannot wait to watch the next one but that was my reaction to this episode if you enjoyed it please give this video a thumbs up if you cannot wait to see my reaction to the next episode please feel free to check out my patreon page or just subscribe to my channel and thank you all for watching and i'll see you next time bye bye